So who's ready for a real quarterback competition? You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Culkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube or wherever you want to download your podcast, just remember this show is free, and never forget how much I appreciate your support. You can show your appreciation if you're watching on YouTube. Click subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, smash that thing, and don't forget to hit the bell notification button. That way you don't miss an episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. All right, we're gonna mix it up on the show, do some football, basketball, then we're gonna get back to football. First, uh, let's let's talk about the quarterback competition. There's gonna be a real one this spring camp, and what's really nice about it is Lincoln Riley will not be participating. He will not have to suit up. He can take a, he can take, he can breathe a sigh of relief knowing he's actually got three scholarship quarterbacks on his roster before spring camp starts. Miller Moss is still QB1. He is USC starting quarterback. Let's not, let's not mince words. Let's not quibble about it. Uh, what he did in the Holiday Bowl, he lit that place up six, t- six touchdown passes. Uh, one interception. And so despite that being his first start as a quarterback since 2019, when he was still in high school, um, you know, look, he, he's had some college experience prior to that start. Um, but against Louisville, against Louisville, what he did, that football team was his to lead. And he led them to a win. He won the locker room. And as Jacoby Covington said, we a team now. Backup quarterback, Jake Jensen, is closer to playing time now than when Caleb Williams was on the roster, obviously. Oh, oh, by the way, just a few days away, we still haven't heard officially from Caleb that he's going to the NFL. Uh, I'm not throwing that out there trying to tease anybody. I just keep bringing it up because it's really curious. You know, I've seen players thanking their team for everything they've done for them. Even Raylan Goforth. Talk about pure class. i got to throw this in there. He thanked the Washington Huskies program, but he also gave equal thanks to his USC Trojan family. That's pure class. That's the type of player uh, I think Lincoln Riley wants back on the team. That type of character. I'm not saying he forced Raylan off. Uh, Raylan did whatever was best for him, but I just thought, because there was no reason for him to do that, I just thought that was a really classy move. So if you see it on Twitter, make sure you you give a, a fight on and a thank you to, to Raylan. Anyways, getting back to the quarterback competition at USC. Um, I, I, look, I think Caleb Williams is going to show up in the green room for the draft, so that's all on that point. <laughs> um, but... The competition at quarterback at USC, it's basically to be Miller's clipboard holder, right? (laughs) You've got Jake Jensen coming back. He was the backup in the Holiday Bowl. You've got Jaden Mayaba. He was the Mountain West Conference freshman of the year. And he's coming to USC. And he's going to try and win the, the starting spot. Don't get me wrong. He's not coming here to play backup. I think he knows that's what his role will be this season, though. <coughs> um, I'm hoping that this battle uh, for the backup spot at USC is we can put that in stone that since Jaden has finally come to his, well, I shouldn't say he, he made the right choice. Look, there's nothing wrong with going to Georgia If you're a defensive player and you want to be coached up by Kirby Smart, great place to go, right? And if you're a quarterback and you've done your homework, you know, an 18 or 19-year-old will know that, hey, 
Georgia's offensive coordinator, their quarterback whisperer, he developed Matthew Stafford into an elite NFL starting quarterback. That was back in 2006. We're 2024 now. So the Bulldogs program, look, they're the top of the food chain. And they, you know, besides Matthew Stafford, they've also got a couple other, and I, I'm going to label them career backups in the NFL because that's really what they are. However, if you are a quarterback and you have the choice between Lincoln Riley developing you as a quarterback at USC or going to Georgia, who, again, they're at the top of the food chain as far as a program is concerned, overall better program than USC, but they've got a deeper depth chart at that quarterback position. So if you're Jaden Maiava, what's the prudent thing to do? That's right. You pick the coach that knows how to maximize your skill set at quarterback. And who is also trying to put USC back closer to the top of that food chain where Georgia is sitting. Right now, Michigan's the national champion. But for the last, what, five, six, seven years, uh, Georgia has been the program. So coming to USC, even though, you know, commit, everyone thought that first thing, you know, committing to Georgia kind of caught everybody by surprise. First team's coming to USC. Then, and, and everybody thought so. Trust me on this. I talked to my peers, um, myself and WeRSC.com. We weren't the only ones who thought uh, Jaden was locked in to USC. Uh, so it kind of caught everybody by surprise. And I think even Lincoln Riley, when he jumped to Georgia, here's the best part about this thing, the good part. Jaden's career at Georgia lasted as long as it would take me to spit out sweet tea. I hate the sweet tea. So it wouldn't take me very long. I think Jaden was a Georgia Bulldog for, what, 24 hours, 28 hours, or whatever. He finally um, found his way back to USC by Wednesday. He, he, he was back where I think his head and his heart knew he should be. USC needs quarterbacks. I know it's weird to say that, but they do. Remember, Caleb Williams, we believe, going to the NFL. Malachi Nelson, he's found his landing spot at Boise State. So USC now has six foot four, 220, 220 pounds. He threw for 3,000 yards, 17 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He's a He was a freshman last year. Let's not forget that. Um, and freshmen make freshman types of mistakes. Look, it would be surprising to me if Jaden showed up and truly pushed Moss for that starting role this spring and in the fall. Now, you're saying, well, you know what? Jaden actually has more playing time on the field than Miller does as a starting quarterback. Absolutely true. But despite the difference in the playing time and his pass attempts, um, you just he can't make up that difference that, that Miller has understanding Lincoln Riley's offense, creating that chemistry with the team. That'll come in time. But look, Jaden, he was the starter at UNLV, and he knew he was going to be a backup and probably third string at best at Georgia. But the backup spot at USC is literally, it's one play away from being the starter. Miller Moss never really had a quarterback competition with Caleb Williams. And he's probably not going to have a true competition with Miller, at least until the fall, at the soonest. But again, you're, you're one play away because the depth chart is better than the one at Georgia. And when you have three more years of eligibility left, like you do, Jaden, you should go take advantage of that chance. You're going to get coached up by Lincoln Riley, one of the best quarterback coaches in the country. And you're actually going to be at one of the better programs in the country historically. They're building themselves back up. And you're going to be playing in the Big Ten Conference, for those of you who want to make sure I say 10, even though there's, what, 
16, 18 teams, however many teams. Um, the quarterback competition, it's wide open as far as that second string position. Uh, Malachi Nelson went to Boise State. Juju Lewis is still at least a couple of years away. 2025 at the earliest if he reclassifies. So it just it didn't make sense for him to go to Georgia. It almost felt like he was being pushed there. And it, I think it had more to do with his, in, his name, image, and likeness agency that he's signed up with, their brand, uh, more than it had anything to do with Jaden's future, what was best for his future. I don't know. You know, I use this analogy on in one of my columns. Is it better to say that, you know, you, you're a member of the Georgia Bulldogs, but you never played? Or would you rather look at the NFL general manager, look him in the face when it's time to get to the draft in a few years and say, you know what? Check out what I look like now. I was coached up by Lincoln Riley. I didn't get to play at Georgia. But for all I know, um, Jaden, he'll he'll get to USC. He'll light it up and he'll push Miller. He'll make Miller's game better. But again, unlike when Caleb Williams arrived at USC, Miller never had that legit shot at the starter's position. And Jaden is actually coming into a similar situation. But from a from a practical point of view. This is the right choice for him. Learn from Lincoln Riley. Learn the offense that Miller already knows and understands. And then push for that quarterback two spot. Go, go yank it away from Jake Jensen if you can. Let me be really clear here to, to, to finish up this segment. I have no issue with NIL and getting what you can. But I do have an issue when that NIL team is making the decisions for reasons that might necessarily might not necessarily have the player's best interest at heart. Uh, I'm going to go into this more as we get into the offseason. I don't want to tie it to this specific situation. But uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit in the third segment. Um, if you haven't heard, Nick Saban retired. And NIL... <laughs> is a big part of the reason why. Again, we'll talk about that coming up here shortly. But first. Trojan fans, I need you to stop stressing out, trying to get tickets to any type of sporting event. Download the Game Time app. They've got killer deals with last-minute tickets, uh, on last-minute tickets, and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and you can start getting hyped for all the fun you want to have. We know the football season is done, but basketball season is in full effect. USC's next home game, by the way, UCLA on both the women's and men's side. And Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for any event, football, basketball, baseball, concerts, anything. They got it. The Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same section for and row, for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. It's why they're the fastest growing ticket app in the country. Get images of your seat before you buy. You're going to know exactly what you get when you arrive, and you can buy your tickets in a matter of seconds. So, snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. And redeem code a locked on college for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right. I'm going to put the football down for a second. We're going to bounce the basketball here for a few minutes. All right. I'm sure you watched it if you have the Pac-12 network. A handful of you that do have it still. <clears throat> the men, the men's basketball team, they're no longer undefeated in the year 2024. Yeah. USC Hoops took another really bad 
Clinton lost at home to the Washington State Cougars, 72 to 64. DJ Rodman's former squad. Well, he was available. Unfortunately, they were without Joshua Morgan, who was a late scratch about an hour or so before the game. Uh, I've learned that he has a respiratory infection. Uh, there's he was Coach Anfield was asked about it after the game. There's no timetable. USC hits the road um, for their next three games. <coughs> we also learned that Boogie Ellis did not practice this week leading up to this game. He's nursing a hamstring injury. And he's playing, I guess, around 60% of his capacity. And then if you were watching the game, uh, I'm sure you noticed that Isaiah Collier missed most of the second half. And after the game, we found out he has a, a hand contusion. What happened was he was called for a foul on a play, and he just never returned. There was a timeout after the, you know, when the, during the, for the foul. And you, you saw him holding his hand when he was coming off the court, but you thought, all right, you know, maybe he's just hand a finger or something. He never returned. So we'll find out uh, what the extent is of that. This is where USC was really hurting for this game and where Joshua Morgan's presence was, was missed. Joshua's not a, an offensive player, but he's a rim protector. And USC was killed inside the paint. Um, they had no answer for Isaac Jones. The Cougars, in fact, he led all scores, 26 points. Uh, check out these stats for Isaac Jones. 7 of 10 from the field. Yeah, 12 for 15 from the free throw line. That means when he wasn't making buckets, he was making free throws. Nobody can guard him. So you didn't have Joshua Morgan there to rip protect. Vince Uwachuku was doing, well, he was doing what he could, uh, but he needs to toughen up. He's seven foot one, but he weighs like 101 pounds. I'm exaggerating. He needs to get stronger. He needs to hit that uh, DeMar DeRozan weight room that he so kindly donated a couple years ago. So USC was left with uh, Johnny Wright, who actually had a pretty good game, and freshman Arrington Page. They both did their best, but it, just, it wasn't close enough. Um, this is what USC did on offense as a team. They were inept. Compared to the game against Stanford, 180 degree, complete opposite. 37.9% from the field. Six for 21 from the three-point line. 14 for 22 from the free throw line. Again, a terrible, terrible loss at home. I get it. Players weren't available. Injuries affect, you know, I, 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 again, I get it. injuries. They have an effect on the game. This team is lacking something. Yeah, I, it's hard to put my finger on it precisely. I'm trying to look at it through my trained eyes of being a, you know, former high school basketball coach, understanding the game. It's, it starts on the defensive side of the ball. That much I can tell you for sure. They, they're just not bringing it like they have in the past under Andy Enfield's teams. Whether it's it's a result of them not being healthy, finger quotes, or they're getting frustrated on the offensive side of the ball, that effort is not carrying over on the defensive side of the ball. And I asked Coach about it. So it's human nature. Probably is happening. Boogie admitted it after the game. Look, I hate to say this, and I've been... I've been hitting about it, but at this point of the season, this team literally is going to have to win the Pac-12 tournament or they're going to bust. They're not making the NCAA tournament because this season right now, it looks just like the football team. When you don't have, look, here's another thing that uh, Coach Enfield brought up before we close out the basketball segment of the show. When you don't have enough players to practice, it shows up on game day. And that is absolutely true. You know, this team is struggling to go at it 100% during practice because Boogie wasn't available. Uh, players are sick, other injuries. So when you only got eight or nine guys, you can't run a five on five. You can't go 100% full speed. 
So apparently that's the latest rationale for why the team isn't gelling, why they're not coming together on game day. Look, I can only report what we're told. If you can agree, you can disagree, but there's something missing from this team this year. A lot of talent. One of the more talented rosters that Andy Enfield's had. So Saturday night, they're going to be at Colorado. I don't know if USC will win that game. I hope they do. But you've got the sideshow of that whole Andy Enfield, Tad Boyle confrontation. They don't like each other, so they get to renew their rivalry. And then next week um, after that, USC plays Arizona and Tucson and Tempe against Arizona State. That will be a 12, uh, 12 o'clock tip-off in California. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm not sure what to anticipate on the road, but they're right now they're two and three in conference. They theoretically, not theoretically, realistically, they could be two and six when they get back home to take on UCLA on the 27th. So we're going to see how things turn out. But until then, until the men come home, hit up that game time app. Go get tickets to the women's game because they're going to be hosting UCLA this Saturday at Galen Center. It's almost sold out. USC is number nine in the country. UCLA is number two. USC had already played at Poly Pavilion. They lost the game over there, tight one. They're out to get some revenge. So get over there, support the support the women's team until the men get back home. They can use your, they can use your support as well. The NFL regular season is over, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. And the FanDuel app is really easy to use, and they got a variety of different ways to bet. You like same-game parlays? They got it. You want to find new bets in their Explore tab? Go check that out. And they've got a they, they have this thing make a parlay in the parlay hub. It's the best way to find the, par, the popular ways to parlay your bet. So go check it out. Visit fanduel.com forward slash a locked on college and make your first bet an easy score. Fanduel, an official partner of the NFL. All right, let's get back to football. If you haven't heard. <laughs> Um, you know the name Pete Carroll? Well, he's available. Uh, he retired. Well, sort of. Um, let me ask you this question. Because somebody actually posed this question, and I've seen it more than once. Pete Carroll or Lincoln Riley, who would you rather have coaching USC right now? Remember, Pete Carroll is, what, 70-something years old. I bring it up because somebody actually proposed that hypothetical. It's out there. Like I said, if you haven't heard, Pete Carroll called it a day. He is a, he's going to take on, he's stepping down from the head coaching position at Seattle. He's going to take on the role of defensive analyst. And they're really calling it defensive analyst emeritus. It's kind of a, it's an honorary position. You can do whatever you want, Pete. You just can't coach the team. <laughs> just kind of hang out. Um, what that really means is that the Seahawks, they disagreed with Pete Carroll, uh, who said he wanted to be the head coach in 2024. Seattle's upper management said, mm, no, we're done. You've done, you've served your time. Here's your gold watch right off into the sunset. <coughs> Excuse me. So I guess the best way to describe this is instead of going through that, you know, that messy divorce and, and firing him, this is kind of a a guise, a ruse to kind of help ease him out of the organization without firing him. You give him an advisory role. It's a, it's a nice way of saying it's it's a nice way of saying we're not going to fire you, but you need to kind of start packing your things up. Um, he didn't want to resign. So, you know, I, he, Carroll has earned so much respect uh, 
throughout his coaching tenure, whether college, NFL, whatever. He's not the type of person to say, you're fired. And you don't want to make it seem like you're you're pushing them out the door. So it's like, you know what? Let's create an, a, an advisory role for you. And you, you know, you stay on the payroll, you collect a call it your social security check, so to speak. But um, I know Pete Carroll. I mean, I don't know him personally. I've spoken to him a few times, but trust me, he won't be there much longer. He's a really competitive guy. He's gonna want to be more involved in just kind of giving being an advisor. So what about this? The right, the correct answer is no. You do not want to replace Lincoln Riley with Pete Carroll. Lincoln Riley is here, I'm hoping, for the long term. Pete Carroll has like maybe two or three more good years left in him in coaching. I'm not saying he's he's slowing down any, but let's be realistic here. You, you need to look towards the future. Pete has done his time. So here's what I'm going to say. I know he still has a home in Southern California. No, he does. It's on the beach. I'm not sure if it's Manhattan Beach or Formosa Beach. He still has that home. Um, and if he's going to settle for an analyst gig, I know where else he could do that for a year or two, if he's willing. Just throwing that out there. I don't know what's going to happen, but if if somebody wanted to extend a, a courtesy call to Pete Carroll, say, hey, Pete, you want to come back to USC and help us out on defense, get the ship right? Show Denton Lynn what it's all about. I don't know anybody who would say no. On that note, um, at one time, Pete Carroll was the best college football coach in the country. And then he went to Seattle. Nick Saban took that baton and ran with it. Nick Saban is retiring from coaching. He's got his six national championships that he won at Alabama. He's got a seventh. You include the one he had at, at LSU before he moved to Alabama. At this point, he's putting them all in a box and he's saying, thank you, Tuscaloosa. I'm out of here. I think, personally, my opinion, the transfer portal window, NIL, the way the college game is going, Nick Saban said, I don't want any more of this. I am done. He liked it the old-fashioned way. When players came to Alabama, they got a free Dodge Charger from his dealership, and everything was done under the table. I'm not sure he's prepared to do the bidding war. He shouldn't have to. And I, I even a Nick Saban has fallen into that trap where he's got to bid for players. I think he doesn't want any part of that. And I don't blame him. So, I wonder what Domani Jackson thinks right about now, right? <laughs> he, went there to, he wanted to be coached up by, by Nick Saban, one of the best defensive back coaches in the industry. What about Zabian Brown? Remember that recruit? Modern day, USC was in on him. Again, Alabama was his dream school because Nick Saban. Well, there's a new 30-day window available for Alabama players to jump into the transfer portal because Nick Saban's retiring. So how many players should USC look at? I mean, how many players will leave Alabama? Because let's be honest here. Alabama is not going to try and, you know, slip into the abyss. They're going to find a coach. And the names out there right now, they're floating around. Lane Kiffin, Dan Lanning. What about Urban Meyer? Should USC fans be offended if Lincoln Riley's name isn't part of that uh, that group? To think about it, right? That just kind of shows you how how big of a hit Lincoln Riley's reputation took this past season. That his name isn't even part of the discussion. I'm okay with that. Lincoln Riley is. I think he has really come to that point in his coaching career. Is like, you know what? I know offense. I'm going to turn this defense around, and I'm going to make USC what USC should be, what USC was with Pete Carroll. 
They were an offensive juggernaut, but they also played defense. So, let's, Pete Carroll, you want to come on back to Southern California? I know a perfect place where you can come in in an advisory role. And you want to talk about energizing the Trojan fan base? I, don't, I can only imagine what it would do to the uh, to the roster as well. He's a legend. All right. I'm out of here. That's it for this episode of Locked on USC. I'll be back again tomorrow. I'll have my Friday rant. And uh, I got a couple of things. Yeah. I got a couple of things. So until then, everyone, you know what to do. <laughs>